Okay, the next views we're going to focus on are the axiolateral and axiolateral oblique for the uh, mandible. Uh, we do an axiolateral without the oblique for the ramus, but there's four variations of this. One is the ramus, and then we add some oblique to uh, a better position for the body, uh, for the mentum, and then we have kind of a general survey, all with different amounts of rotation. The other thing that's important with this view to remember is that the amount of tilt, the head tilt or uh, tube tilt, needs to add up to 25 degrees. So um, depending on your patient's mobility, I always like to throw a little bit of tube tilt, but if I'm going to tilt my patient's head 15 degrees, that means I want to have a 10 degree cephalic angle uh, to supplement so that both of those angles add up to 25 degrees. And you can vary depending on how your patient can move. However, I would like to mention if you only do the tube uh, angulation, if you went 25 degrees cephalic with tube only with no head tilt, you run the risk of throwing the shoulder into the field of view, uh, potentially superimposing it over the mandible. Uh, so first, we're just going to start with the axiolateral. This will be for the ramus. Um, typically, you want to get your patient in a lateral position. So I'm going to have you turn your shoulders towards the board and maybe slide forward a little bit if you can, if the chair allows you. There we go. And then I'm going to turn your head lateral, true lateral position. Keep turning. There you go. And the IOML needs to be parallel to the floor. So let's tuck your chin in just a little bit. A little more. There you go. And I'm just looking for tilt and rotation up top here. And I like where his head's at. Um, now what we're going to do is probably angle him. We'll see how far he can go. Let's try to tilt your head to the right. That's good. That's about 15 degrees, I'd say. So because he's 15, I'm going to throw a 10 degree angle on my x-ray tube. And I'm going to center right at the gonion. So the important part, the lowest thing on your radiograph is going to be the mentum. The highest is going to be the TMJ side up, or that condyle. So as long as your field of view includes that, raise this up just a little, then you should be good. So now with the combination of head tilt 15, the tube angle at 10, we have our supplementary 25 degrees, we can shoot this. Now just notice, this is for the ramus. Now the ramus is the kind of the most lateral posterior portion of the mandible. In practicality, wherever the patient has pain should be rotated and placed closest to the IR. However, textbook version, if you're going to shoot an axiolateral oblique, you can rotate the head 30 degrees towards the IR about right there. This would get you a good survey of the body because it puts the body closest to the IR. Another 15 degrees to 45 would put the mentum closest to IR. And then if you come back and just rotate about 20 to 25 degrees, that just gives a general survey. Your department protocols may vary, but we have some options and there's, there's four different options in the book that you should be aware of and you can be tested on on the registry exam. Uh, the, the other option is to oblique the patient in such a way that the uh, shoulder closest to the x-ray tube is posterior, and this allows uh, prevention of the shoulder from superimposing as well. Another thing to mention would be you want to make sure that you're getting the very bottom, the mentum. You need the light field beyond the EAM. In true lateral, both condyles would be anterior to the EAM, so we've got that. And the light field over to the board, you're not going to have condyles above the, uh, the eyelash mark here, or the, the orbit. So again, take on suspended respiration, and just follow your department protocols.